Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena game for video. Today we're taking a look at another standard deck, and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, we're taking a look at a green-white, a Shaya Soul of the Wild plus Onduin version combo deck. So this interesting two-card combo is pretty straightforward. We get a Shaya, the five mana star star, whose power and toughness are each equal to the number of lands we control, and non-token creatures we control are also forest lands in addition to their other types. And then we have Ondo Inversion, an 8 mana sorcery destroying all non-land permanents. So thanks to Ashaya turning all our creatures into forests, those creatures won't die to the Ondo Inversion, and it turns into this one-sided sweeper that deals with all the opponents and non-land permanents. So that's the two-card combo that we're trying to pull off, but the rest of the deck is still kind of this green-white ramp deck that can definitely win games without having to pull off the combo. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck. At 2 mana we've got some ramp with Elysian Karyatid, which can add 1 mana of any color, and if we have a creature with power 4 or greater, it adds 2 mana instead. So that's great in combination with Yasharn, because on the Mammoth after it enables Landfall, Gergroth and Ashaya, so plenty of creatures with power 4 or greater to enable our Karyatid, even the Angel tokens from Emiria's Call. Then we also have the full playset of Lotus Cobra, which is incredibly synergistic with Ashaya, as now all our creatures entering the battlefield will also enable Landfall, which adds one mana of any color to our mana pool with Lotus Cobra in play, and it also works quite nicely with Fabled Passage, which can enable Landfall twice in one turn, and then also just a 2-1 creature that can apply a bit of pressure. And then Maze Mind Tome is our card draw engine of choice in this deck. Because our plan is to eventually cast on the inversion to wipe the board, we don't want to rely on a card like the Great Henge to provide card advantage, because we can't protect that even with Ashaya in play. But Maze Mind Tome, we get a few activations, it eventually goes away, so we don't really mind casting an Ondo Inversion afterwards. And we've got plenty of mana generation between Lotus Cobra, Karyatid, and Ashaya turning our creatures into lands, essentially, that we can easily sink mana into Maze Mind Tome to draw cards. And then at 3 mana, we've got some removal with Skyclave Apparition, one of the great additions from Zendikar Rising. Can exile a non-land permanent with converted mana cost 4 or less, and when the Apparition dies, it leaves behind a token for the opponent. And then a Lenor Visionary can draw some cards as well when it enters the battlefield and ramps towards our 5 drops. And Kazandu Mammoth has the flexibility of both being a land or a 3 3 creature that with landfall gets plus 2 plus 2. So, another creature that synergizes nicely with Ashaya, as we can potentially enable landfall more than once in the same turn. And then at 4 mana, we've got the Asharn Implacable Earth, a 4 4 creature that searches up a plains and a forest when it enters the battlefield. So, perfect for hitting our land drops until we can cast some of our dual face cards. And then also prevents players from paying life or sacrificing non land permanents to cast spells or activate abilities, which doesn't affect us, so it's pure upside, and every now and then it can prevent an interaction in the opponent's deck. And then at 5 mana, besides our 4 copies of Ashaya, which besides enabling the inversion combo is also just a giant creature that doubles all our landfall triggers, we also have 2 copies of Elder Gergroth, which is a 6-6 with Vigilance, Reach and Trample, and whenever Gergroth attacks or blocks, we either get to make a 3-3 beast, gain 3, or draw a card. So nice card draw engine as well. And then topping off our curve, we've got all these mythic dual face cards with Emiria's Call for 7 mana making 2 4 4 angel warrior creature tokens with flying and non angel creatures we control gain indestructible until our next turn. And then 4 copies of Turn Timber Symbiosis, which is another way of potentially finding Ashaya, as we get to take a look at the top 7 cards of our library, and we can put a creature card from among them onto the battlefield, and if that card had converted mana cost 3 or less, it also enters with 3 additional plus 1 plus 1 counters on it, so that's nice if we don't find Ashaya or one of our bigger creatures, we still get to maybe put a Visionary in play with 3 counters, get a 5-5 five five draw card, that's not too bad. And then of course Onduin Version at 8 mana, destroying all non-land permanents. And then the mana base, we do need some basics for Fabled Passage and for Yasharn, so we've got 4 Plains and 4 Forests, 4 of the Green-White Pathway, as well as 4 Fabled Passage, which is great in combination with Landfall. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, we've got a Shaya, Lotus Cobra, missing Ondo Inversion, but this hand will do for now. Turn 1, probably play Mammoth. Opponent on Monorad Aggro. Of 
Cobra and get stomped. We'll play Mammoth. And then I can maybe use Fable Passage to pump Mammoth in the opponent's turn as well. Never mind, a Royal Eruption takes care of Mammoth. Well, I can still play another one and then uh, Fable Passage. Although they can just turn it into a Coward with the Intimidator to prevent me from blocking. So playing a Yasharn seems better here. Next turn we get to play Ashaya, which is nice and chunky. A red cap melee, killing Yasharn at the cost of a land. Fair enough. Well, there's no shortage of Ashayas here. But we are getting pretty low, and Intimidator can still get in. Huh. I guess they might have a burn spell to finish off a Shia, but I'm pretty happy if that's the case. Because we've got another one. Scorching Dragonfire, fair enough. Play a Shia, and then... Probably play one of these tap lands. Question is which one. Probably want to get the Emiria's Call in play, is my guess, which can close out the game faster than Symbiosis would. So I'll just play Symbiosis tapped, I think. Or I could play a Mammoth tapped, although Mammoth can also close out the game pretty quickly with a Shia doubling landfall. So, yeah, let's just play a Symbiosis tapped here. So they can play Giants. Gotta watch out for an Ember Cleave killing me if they manage to get enough creatures in play. Apparition's also a nice one. Alright, so this turn maybe go Mammoth plus Apparition. Makes it less likely for the opponent to Ember Cleave me. And then next turn we'll be able to enable Landfall quite a bit for the Mammoth. And then I should probably just attack with Ashaya here. And then I'll keep the forest in hands to enable landfall. Akum Hellhound, that's fine. A Royal Eruption face. And an attack, so we have to block. I guess, let's see, if I block with Apparition, they get a 3-3 token. So I might as well trade for Mammoth, and then I force them to chum block with the Akum Hellhound next turn. And my opponent concedes, alright, so they weren't waiting to maybe top deck another Royal Eruption. Maybe they didn't have any left in the deck. But uh, yeah, close one here against Monored. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw, facing a Yurion deck. And we've got a pretty nice start with Cobra into a turn three Yasharn, potentially. Do I want to play Emirios Call? I'll probably hang on to it for now. Could have also played Mammoth tapped. Opponent on blue whites. Cobra gets Assassin scattered, so now I'll probably just play Visionary. Midnight Clock, okay. Some anti mill technology. Another Cobra, probably still better to play Visionary. But Cobra is still going to be useful in combination with Ashaya to generate additional mana. 
So Elspeth Conqueror's Death is going to be a pretty difficult card to beat if they can flicker it with Yorion. As that kind of gets rid of all my win conditions. Omen of the Sea. But on the other hand, Ondo Inversion is pretty effective if they've got a bunch of these enchantments in play. So I'm going to hang on to a Shia for now, I think. Maybe go Cobra plus something else. Yeah, I don't mind Cobra into Yasharn. If they want to shatter, we still get to draw a card, and if they want to conquer death, at least we're not losing a Shia. No double white just yet. Yasharn also prevents them from sacrificing Omen of the Sea. Opponents got their own Maze Mind Tomb and another Omen. So yeah, the opponent playing Yorion is going to be quite powerful. Skyclave Apparition could deal with one of the opponent's things, like the Mace Mind Tome, probably. So here the question is, do we play around Shatter or do we play around Elspeth Conquer's Death? And if we pick the wrong one, we're going to be in a lot of trouble. I think I play around Conquer's Death and not Shatter, because Shatter's kind of difficult to play around here. So, yeah, we'll play a land... Play a Shia. Play Apparition, and then I can still hit for six. Could also go after Omen, but if the opponent's play next turn is just Yorion, I'm not too sad. Playing Mammoth there was also reasonable. If we're not going to play around Shatter anyway. But I assume Ashaya will be dealt with, so we won't get the double landfall triggers for the Mammoth anyway. Alright, there's a Conqueror's Death. Gets rid of Ashaya. No surprises there. Ooh, Ondo Inversion. That would have been nice with Ashaya still in play. So I get to attack for 10 here, put them to 5, so I guess if their play is just Flicker uh, Conquer's Death, it's not too bad, since they would still be dead on board. So my opponent's out is probably still finding a Shatter the Sky, and I can cast a Mirios Call to prevent that from being effective. So I think we've got all the angles covered here. They don't have the mana to cast Ugin the Spirit Dragon, which could have been a solution here. So Yorion Flicker's Conqueror's Death isn't good enough, and Shatter the Sky also isn't good enough now that our creatures are indestructible until our next turn. So yeah, we needed to dodge Shatter, couldn't really play around it. Decided to just play around Conqueror's Death instead. And uh, it paid off here. A ruined Halo. Okay. I guess that's kind of cute with uh, Yorion being able to flicker it and name something else. Names Yasharn. Yorion flickers Conqueror's Death. I guess they can conquer Apparition. Make a token. But I think they're still dead here. Because one angel will go unblocked, and then we have two more damage on the ground. But yeah, they definitely got close to surviving. It's 
So Yasharn doesn't deal any damage. But four from Angel, plus two more from Visionary or Cobra. Alright, GG's on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with uh, fine opening hands. Probably play Mammoth Tapped since we've got double Visionary as additional three mana plays. Temple of Epiphany. Could be awkward if we don't draw another lands. Hmm. On the inversion, I probably want to hang on to. Because yeah, if I play carry it, they kill it. Then Passage comes into play tapped. I don't get to play Visionary. But I guess so it goes. Alternatively, I could have played Passage tapped and then be guaranteed a turn 3 Visionary at least. Alright, Stomp kills Caritids. And we don't draw an untapped land, so this was kind of the worst case scenario. Alright, we did pick up Ashaya, so we've got the Ashaya inversion combo at least. So I want my opponent to play out more creatures, although Blue Red typically doesn't have a ton of creatures. So how do we want to sequence things? Opponent's got 4 mana up. Don't feel confident that Ashaya will resolve, so... I could go Visionary plus Cobra and double spell instead of... Uh, Playing Yasharn here. Right, that resolves as well. And I'll probably have to play one inversion here. And pass a turn. So now we've got the mana to potentially double spell, and if they counter the first Yasharn, we can still play a second one. Giant gets in for four. So they did nothing with four mana. And a Storm's Wrath gonna wipe the board. That was to be expected. But now we get to resolve one of our bigger creatures. Could play Ashaya, or I could go Yasharn. And then still play Tomb. And this appears to be a pretty grindy matchup, so I'm probably just going to draw instead of scrying. Unless we want to pull off the inversion, in which case I will uh, probably want to sacrifice Tomb before we cast it. Double vision, that's kind of scary. So that plus Storm's Wrath could just deal 8 to everything, so Ashaya might not be safe. But yeah, it's not like I really have any great answers to a 5-man enchantment. So, could play Ashaya, hope it doesn't die. And then next turn, play Inversion. Yeah, it's probably my best bet. And I still get to draw with Tomb, at least. Or I could wait until Ashai has at least 9 toughness so it doesn't die to a double Storm's Wrath. I mean, Symbiosis could also find Ashai has, so I think. I still played here. And hope they don't have a Storm's Wrath exactly. Right, Soul Seer times 2 is okay. So I get to draw with a tomb, 
play Symbiosis to try and find a bank of Ashaya. Gergroth, nice too, although probably doesn't survive a doubled burn spell. So do we want to scry? I have seven mana for Symbiosis, so I don't necessarily have to find a land. So we'll hit for four. And then now, with an extra land, Ashaya would be a 10 10. And even if Yasharn dies, we'd still have nine toughness to survive double Storm's Wrath. All right, there's a Shaya. And the next turn we can maybe finally cast Inversion with a Shaya in play. Double Thrill to draw four cards, pretty good. So if their plan is to just play a few Chum Blockers, we've got that covered. And double Storm's Wrath plus another burn spell could still be bad. It's going to be real instead. And a Valakut Awakening to draw a million cards. Alright, so... Inversion should seal the deal here. I've got the 8 mana required to cast it. But her opponent is drawing an impressive amount of cards. So no real need to scry. And hit for 14. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play, and yeah, this hand seems fine. How do I want to sequence my lands is interesting. So I want to play Cobra on two. Can hang on to Symbiosis, or I can decide to play it out. Probably want to hang on to Symbiosis for now. And then I think I also hang on to Mammoth as a turn three play. So that probably means I have to play one Fabled Passage on turn one. All right. Next turn I can play Mammoth and then say Fable Passage for turn four, maybe. Opponent also with turn two Cobra. All right. Um, just play this one as a white source, and then I can make green. Could also Apparition the opponent's Cobra. Maybe that's safer. But I also kind of want to start beating down. So if they want to trade, that's fine by me. So this looks like the Teamer Genesis Ultimatum ramp deck. With Terror of the Peaks and Beanstalk Giant as a scary combo. They could still stomp my Cobra. It's going to be a second Cobra instead. Can have up to six mana, which is not enough for Apparition and Yasharn. Probably one Apparition, at least one Cobra, so we don't have to fear Genesis Ultimatum next turn. And then the question is, do I have Fable Passage or not? I don't think I do. Just play Symbiosis tapped. And then say Fable Passage to maybe cast Symbiosis next turn. That makes sense. Our opponent's got six mana. And they are looking menacingly at my Kazandu Mammoth. Shadow Skull smashing, killing both Cobra and Mammoth at once. 
Yeah, that's too bad. Now I won't be able to play any of my 7 drops. But yeah, Sharn's still a decent play here. Is it time for Genesis Ultimatum? It is. Well, that's probably game over. Don't think we can really beat an Ugin unless we can cast onto Inversion. And at 6 mana we're pretty far from doing that. So yeah, the Teamer deck is just kind of the better ramp deck here. We're trying to do something pretty gimmicky, whereas the opponent has one card that can kind of win the game by itself. Symbiosis can maybe find the Beanstalk Giants to deal 7 to our face. And an attack should do it. Alright, GG's, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a keepable hand, turn 3 Apparition to interact, and then Yasharn to find lands required to maybe cast a second Emiria's Call. Probably gonna play the first one tapped. Opponent with a turn one forests into mountain and scavenging ooze. Fine target for apparition. Their opponent on the red green adventure deck, presumably. So, the cards we're most afraid of are probably the legendary artifacts Great Henge and Embercleave. At least with Apparition, we can delay both of those for quite some time. And this is a matchup where eventually getting to a Shaya is quite nice since they don't have any great removal spells for it if it's large enough. And then. Ondo Inversion can also be a great way to get rid of some of those legendary artifacts. Maze Mind Tome, perfect for providing some more cards. Next turn we can maybe go Tome plus Apparition. Pretty happy if Yasharn manages to trade off since we've got a backup. And then we're slowly working towards Emiria's Call. So I could attack with Yasharn to offer the trade. My opponent's unlikely to take the trade anyway. And I think I would rather just play the Apparition to exile the Giants. Could also keep Apparition for Innkeeper, but they didn't have one turn one, so it's unlikely that they have one in hand. So I guess Apparition could exile Lovestruck Beasts as a 5-5, which can block Yasharn. So that's a reason to hold it as opposed to just using it on the Giants. There's Ondo Inversion. So I think I will just play Apparition here. And smack for four. And then hope they don't have a Lovestruck Beasts. So their hand might be like Amber Cleave, Great Henge, maybe another Bone Crusher Giants. Probably going to wait to draw with the Tome instead of Scrying. So best case scenario for me, my opponent just plays a Bone Crusher Giant as a 4-3. I get to trade with Yasharn. Next turn play another one, draw with the Tome. Brushfire Elemental is fine too. Do they have a fetch land to go with it? Just a regular tap land. So that's going to hit for 3. Can block 
And I'm not gonna block the 2-2 token. Symbiosis could be nice too. So we'll main phase draw, I think. Carrot, it's not bad. So next turn I could get Amber Cleaved, potentially. If they have a fetch land and an Ember Cleave, that's gonna hurt. Just a Kazandu Mammoth. So next turn we'll get to cast one of our 7 mana sorceries. They played a Smashing Tapped. Emiria's Call versus Symbiosis. Probably go with Emiria's Call. Making my creatures indestructible is also great. And then, do I want to do anything else? Probably not. Just chill. It is tempting to maybe play one of these lands out in case something bad happens to carry it. it. But I can always decide to take three next turn and play another Emir's Call. So, Apparition, Yashar, and Indestructible for now. So those are great blockers. And the angel tokens will probably kill my opponent pretty quickly. Plays another bone crusher and a robber. So they are setting up for maybe a big ember cleave turn here. Maybe I should scry with tome. If I find a Shaya, that would be pretty epic. Another carry it instead. So probably just attack for four and then play another Emirius Call. Just keep as many blockers back as possible so we don't die to a cleave. And then next turn should be able to win with all our angels. So they can decide to jump with a robber. Fetch lands means double landfall triggers. So it does feel like Amber Cleave is the opponent's best bet. On a mammoth, it's 16 trample. That goes there, that goes here. So right now if they cleave, they could cleave the Mammoth, make it 8 double strike, and then they get to kill both of my Angels, hit me for another 8, 5 from Elemental. So we go to 2. So it would be dead to another stomp. I could not block the 2-2 and then block the brush fire instead. I can't put apparition in front of the brush fire, sadly. So that doesn't really work. But I guess I could block like this. Put apparition in front of giants. So there's four unblocked, and then if they Amber cleave the mammoth, I'm still only taking four plus. 8 is 12, so I'm not dead to a stomp. And then I should still have lethal on the way back. I probably didn't have to trade my angel token for the brushfire elemental, and I could have just blocked the robber of the rich instead, and then kept an extra angel token alive. And there's a cleave. And a Scavenging Ooze as their last card. 
So that can gain one. So what do I need to find here? If I find Apparition, that's game. Alright, that should do it. If we didn't find Apparition, we still had a few options. Either play my Ondo Inversion after attacking to just reset the board and my opponent's empty-handed, we still have a lot of leftovers. Or we could have cast Symbiosis to try and look for Apparition that way if we managed to draw land instead. So definitely still had a few options, even if we didn't get lucky to just draw the Apparition here. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Turn two Tome into a turn three Mammoth. And then double Tome can maybe find Inversion to eventually combo with Ashaya. No shortage of Ashayas. Opponent on Black Red. And a Mire Triton, so this is the mid range deck. Carrotid's nice pickup, although it's probably not going to survive. Could also decide to play another tome, play a tap mammoth here. Do I want to trade? A death touch mire triton is going to be pretty annoying long term as well. But I suppose I could take two here. And then try and get more mana established to leverage tome before we trade off. Yasharn's a nice draw. Probably going to be the play here. And now Karyotid makes two mana. Take four. And a Croxa. I think I get rid of the Mammoth here. And then just keep double Tome to outgrind the opponent. Play a Shia. Could also play Tome instead of uh, attacking for 4. Yeah, the 4 damage probably doesn't matter too much in the grand scheme of things. Opponent still stuck on 2 lanes. Another Croxa. Probably okay to get rid of a land. Because I want to keep back up a Shia in case they kill the first one. And then I don't think I need to scry. We'll just wait. Garagroth is nice too. And then I'm kind of just looking for Ondo Inversion here to seal the deal. So I can play Tome and then draw with one of them. And maybe scry with the other. They do have a pretty full graveyard, so they can definitely escape as soon as they get the mana too. Stomps my face. So I'll scry and then draw and then scry again on upkeep. Well, there's the inversion. So let's see here, five, six, seven. I guess I wouldn't mind scrying into a land. I will lose my tomes, I suppose, but it's probably worthwhile. All right, that'll do. Oh, I meant to play inversion there. I guess we can wait one more turn. 
and then play another tomb. Yeah, it wouldn't quite have been lethal. I would have put my opponent to four. So I guess uh, waiting one more turn is okay. Fourth line is tapped, so no escaped Croxa. Not that we really would have minded. Murderous Rider kills Gergroth. Sure. So I can hit for 20, potentially. Apparition would have been fine. Right, and there's my lands. So I can play lands, and then we want to scry before playing inversion. And I'm post inversion, don't need more lands. Mammoth is fine, I guess. All right. Bonus at three. And don't really see them coming back. So a bit of a misclick there. Could have cast inversion a turn sooner. But uh, yeah, pretty sweet combo whenever you get to pull it off. So even if the deck doesn't consistently go Ashaya into Ondo Inversion, it is quite satisfying when we can pull it off. Overall the deck's okay, definitely pretty weak to Ugin ramp decks of all sorts, and uh, some of the Yorion decks can definitely go over the top, especially if they're playing Elspeth Conquer's Death. That's a pretty hard card for us to interact with. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.